due to the employer. At the beginning of every meeting, we inform you of the process for appealing decisions from the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission. You may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the February meeting. Do I have a motion? Uh, make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. It, and then we have a second. Is there any discussion on the meeting? Minutes? No. Nope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? We have approval of the minutes. Next item is uh, Tennessee Foreign Language Institute uh, presentation on tax cab driver program. I understand you're going to handle that for us today. I am. The, the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute apologizes. They had an issue that came up that they were unable to be present. At the last commission meeting, there was issues of uh, how quickly we could get a taxi cab driver onto the street because of the requirements for classes. You asked if I would explore with the uh, TFLI the possibility of how we could handle additional classes. The ordinance currently allows the companies to uh, establish other classes by working a, a deal, working a special class out with the uh, with them. And what they've done is put together a plan where, uh, and I'll just read it, uh, if interested parties would like to add classes to the existing schedule, a fee of $700 per class will be collected before the date can be added to the calendar. This fee will ensure that teachers are compensated for their scheduled time regardless of the enrollment numbers. Requests for additional classes must be made at least three weeks ahead of time for the purpose of scheduling. Any additional class, any additional classes will have the same student fee for the existing classes, but there won't be there will not be a minimum enrollment. Uh, if for some reason no student uh, no students attend the classes, the, the fee is non-refundable. Uh, and then they discuss how we would uh, make the uh, how they'd make the request. So it it does meet with what the ordinance allows in terms of additional classes. Uh, it, it seems reasonable if the companies need to have special classes. So for a $700 fee, they'll be happy to have any class uh, and set it up and get them on the street. So that would, if the companies actually want to go ahead and schedule them monthly, you could, that way there would be two a month. The ones that they're already running, then they could run a special one. So that would be every two weeks there'd be a class and that would be, the companies could take turns paying them, they could pull Split their money, it. they could okay. do whatever they'd like to do. And are right. they paying the student fees on top of the 700? The students would still be paying their fees. Their fee but on top the, of the what this would do would guarantee okay. the, uh, the teachers if no students, uh, if they paid. ended up not coming in. So that was the report. It does not require any action uh, unless you want additional information. In other words, it doesn't need to be accepted or it just needs to be reported. Tax cab companies seem okay with that? Well, we're just sharing it with them for the first time okay. since uh, I will circulate that to them after today's meeting. All right. You'll let us know at the next meeting mm -hmm. if there's any issue. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Next item on the agenda is um, a low speed vehicle and uh, a review of a complaint filed against Joyride by Cruising and He Holland. Mr. Fields? We had a, a couple of weeks ago, we had, we were contacted by one of the companies with by uh, uh, cruising, alleging some deceptive practices uh, and violations that they believed were going on. 
Uh, we they filed documents with the commission. I also shared those with the commission. We shared them with legal. Uh, I had issues and questions about what we could or could not do, so I asked legal for opinions and thoughts on it. So they're prepared to share with you what they determined. Um, so what we were looking at is um, whether the allegations amounted to allegations of violations of Chapter 673. Because as to this type of vehicle, that is the chapter of the code that um, kind of contains you, your authority over them. Um, so we had actually, um, I think Billy had relayed that question to Mr. Winters, um, who had responded and um, cited several provisions of um, Chapter 673 um, that he believed were implicated. Um, and he cited um, 673-090, which I'll come back to. Um, he cited 673-109, but from the language he cited in conjunction with it, I think he actually meant 673-200, 673-290, and 673-310. Now, 673-200 relates to the conduct of a driver. And since this is really a question about a, a company, a, a certificate holder, that did not appear to me to be applicable at all. Um, 290 and 310, upon reviewing both of those sections, appeared to me to be about the external appearance of the vehicle. And again, that did not appear to me to be at all related to this issue. So I did not think any of those provisions, like the, I don't think these allegations could, could be read to amount to a violation of any of those provisions. The first one, though, 673.090, um, is um, a much broader one, and um, I'll read it to you. There is a provision within it um, that says, um, it's called suspension and revocation. A certificate issued under the provisions of this chapter may be revoked, suspended, placed on probation, otherwise restricted, or not reviewed by the, no, sorry, not renewed by the MTLC if the holder thereof has and then I think the relevant one is, number two, violated any provision of this code or other ordinances of the metropolitan government or laws of the United States or the state of Tennessee, the violation of which reflects unfavorably on the fitness of the holder to offer transportation services. Um, so it is possible that the allegations do amount to a violation of some other law, but I am not prepared to give you an opinion on that issue. Um, and I believe that it would be more prudent for this commission to defer to other enforcement authorities and tribunals that would have more primary jurisdiction over these types of issues than you would. If such an enforcement authority and tribunal um, proceeding were to result in a finding of fact that such a violation had been committed, then I believe Mr. Winters could bring that back to y'all under 673-090 and ask that discipline be administered on that basis. So, do we have any obligation because it was presented to this committee to research further for them or, they, or is the obligation on them to, to find those particular ordinances that they might feel have, have been violated. Since it's been presented to us, if we default to another committee, are, is, are, are we negating any, any obligation that we have because it was presented to this committee? I mean, I, 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 I do think that you have some discretion here. Um, this is the recommendation that I'm making to you, but you do not have to follow it. If you think that this is an urgent matter and you wish to do your own fact finding and, and, and hear the evidence in this case and make a determination as to whether those other laws were violated, um, uh, I, I suppose you could proceed to do so. I, I would not recommend it just because I think that there are other agencies and tribunals that were specifically created and, and assigned the authority over those types of, of issues. And, and um, for that reason, I think it would be more prudent to defer them. But you don't have to. 
Do, what, what, uh, do you have those particular agencies in mind? I, I have some thoughts, um, and I'm sure the parties have brought attorneys with them, especially that they will have some thoughts as well. Um, I'm sure. But, um, you know, the, the Federal Trade Commission comes to mind, and also maybe the Tennessee Attorney General's Consumer Protection Division. So, right now, what you're saying is that this wouldn't be, or probably wouldn't be considered a violation of any of the codes that we have uh, on the books for. Of six, 673 is the relevant one for this type yeah. of vehicle. Um, and um, no, uh, you know, we had we had asked Mr. Winters to cite any conceivable section of 673 that might be violated by this conduct, and he had come up with those four sections, and so that is what we looked at. And again, three of them, I think, just on the face of it, it doesn't. The facts don't fit. Um, and the fourth one is this general one that I read to you, and. Um, it, it, it appears to me that it, 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 well, it is possible that there may be a violation of these other provisions, and I, I don't know that. I'm not saying that there is. Um, I would just say that, you know, certainly I hope Mr. Winters has an attorney advising him who can, who can you know, analyze these issues for him and, and advise him on whether any of those other um, provisions are, in fact, implicated. Thank you. Do I get a gist of what you're saying or suggesting is that there are other agencies more fit or with more experience to do the fact-finding and make a determination and then when they do the fact-finding they can come back it can come back to us to decide whether it pl whether action should be taken under under 673090 I do believe that to be the case and I mean what I, what, what we generally do talk about in terms of um, um, the scope of this commission is, you know, I think primarily always public safety. And mm -hmm. I do think public safety is beyond just um, like physical safety in terms of avoiding accidents or death or injury. I mean, I, I think it, it does um, go to um, uh, protecting the public in other ways as well. Um, and, and, and a harm can come in many ways. So, you know, I, I think that's why we have 090 in there mm -hmm. is that, you know, if someone is engaging, in, and even then, even if I would, I would add that there is a second step. Like even if there, this went to one of those other tribunals or a third one that I'm not even thinking of, um, uh, and, and such a finding was made that there was such a violation, um, then you would still have to look at that violation um, and determine um, whether it. Um, and reflects unfavorably on the fitness of the holder to offer transportation services because uh, there could be misconduct that people could commit and other fears in their life that arguably might not. So, you know, that I think it would absolutely be up to this commission to make a finding of fact on. And this is solely a complaint from Mr. Winters and Cruzen? I, uh, no, I don't believe it is. I believe there is another party that has mm -hmm. joined in as well, so we will have to hear. I mean, we can hear from them. I, I, I don't. Looks like Key Hall. Mean to speak for them if they have other violations yeah, okay. that they would like to point out or arguable violations. I'm happy to look at those and advise you on those as well. And as I said, you you all don't have to take my advice. It's just a recommendation. Well, and if you're saying we don't really have jurisdiction at this point in a roundabout way, should we review the complaint? I mean. Um, I think what you could do is let them maybe characterize the complaint for themselves instead of me speaking for them, which I don't purport to be able to do, but maybe before we get into a fact-finding stage, if you want to look at this issue after you've heard from them, that could be appropriate. Okay. Commissioner? Go ahead, Pat. Maybe with a, a limited review or, or give an opportunity for a very limited uh, discussion of the complaint. But, but from what I'm hearing, it's not really a jurisdictional issue. It's a question of whether we're the appropriate body to do, that has the experience to do the fact finding, to I put agree. people under oath or to have investigators go out and, t and, and do the work in the field. And I, I like the idea that. Uh, I like the idea that if there's agencies who regularly investigate fraudulent websites or deceptive websites that uh, perhaps they should do that 
and we keep an ear to it and get a report and then decide if it falls under reflecting unfavorably on the fitness of the company or misleading or such as to tends to deceive or defraud the public. But I'm, I'm not opposed to maybe a very limited discussion of what the complaint is. All right. But I, that's just my suggestion. So. I, I would also add to that that, <clears throat> you know, what I don't want to see us get into is a he said, she said scenario without actual proof of what's going on. And even in that instance, we're not here to, to judge that, that there are other places that should take that fact finding up. But just to hear, you know, here's what I think's happening and we didn't do this and whatever, we're, we're going down a horse carriage path, which I, <laughs> which I think is, is not ever resolvable without true proof of what's going on. It's sometimes full of messy obstacles. <laughs> All right, I think we'll proceed then, and uh, uh, I think we'll go in the order of cruising, hee hauling, and joyride. Okay. Uh, representative from cruising? Do you want to put a time frame? <coughs> yeah. Do we have a clock? clock? We don't have a clock, I've but. I've got it across the hall if you need it. Uh, well, I'll I think point, we Mr. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I've got a stopwatch. I've got a stopwatch. All right. Two minutes. Yeah. Mr. Wallen? Yes. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> yes, sir. My name is Michael Winters. I represent Cruisin. I thank you for your time and, and for your research and looking at another slightly challenging topic. The one thing I ask you to consider is look at the intent of the ordinance, not always the black and white of the ordinance. Meaning when that ordinance was written, I think it was written based on the thoughts and processes of that time, which I believe would simply be not everybody has a yellow golf cart so that the consumer can tell which carts are which. At that time, I doubt you thought somebody would set up fake names or fake domain sites which actively roll traffic, meaning not only was the website set up, 19 websites were set up with the word cruising in it, which is funny because when I first applied, the, Chris at Joyride very candidly thought cruising was spelt like cruising, so he typed in cruising and registered a bunch of websites. In October, he realized I spelled it C-R-U-Z, C-R-U-Z-Z-I-N. He went back and registered multiple more. He's done it 22 times to segue. Um, the free ride, freebies, gotcha rides, Music City carts. If you look at the laws, they talk about habitual, bad faith, ill intent is the, is the verbiage that's used. And I think that is well signified. To capsize that point, as of this morning, every single one of those domain sites no longer roll over. They mysteriously so long, no longer roll over. The good news is I have video proof of every single one of them rolling over, which I can show you if you want to see it. Um, when I reference the ordinance and the sections in here, what I'm talking about is the intent of the ordinance. The intent in the section that you referenced was the color of the carts. And the purpose of that was so the consumer going down the road sees a red and white, blue and white cart, no different than a pink cab or a yellow cab. They get an idea of who they're, going, who they're using and what they're doing. Prior to this morning, if you typed in nowplayingnashville.info.us.net, those rolled over to Chris Sizemore to Joyride actively trying to steal traffic from, very candidly, one of the largest nonprofits in the city of Nashville. I talked to the director of that agency, and I think he may be in the room, um, not very pleased about that. I also talked to every other owner of every other company affected by this. I have multiple letters from those companies agreeing that it's dishonest and not so favorable. What I'm asking for is when you look at this ordinance, you have to look at the intent. What was the intent of not having a bunch of yellow carts? The intent was for the consumer to know what they're getting. How did I find out about this? We are the only golf cart company in the city of Nashville that takes the total access pass, which the city pushes very, very hard to try to generate revenue and, and stuff for people to do. Well, on their website, they listed Cruise in Nashville, which is how we go by. Well, the average consumer would type in cruisingnashville.com. That website rolled over to Joyride. We got multiple complaints from consumers who were trying to use their total access pass and ended up at a different company unknowingly until they realized that company could not accept or take total access pass, which we are part of. So these ordinance sections that I reference, I think are very gray and matter with intent. I'm asking you to look at intent not the exact black and white. If the intent of those ordinances were not to deceive and to make sure people could tell the difference from one company to another, then does it matter if it's electronic domain versus the color of a cart? It's the intent. Now keep in mind also, uh, Joyride is a trademark holder. They are smart, they know what they're doing, they have a registered trademark, this is not naive, oh, I, I didn't know any better. Um, 
so you guys, I think, have a listing of the domain sites. I have video proof of every one of those rolling over. I have copies of letters from companies affected by it. I also have a list of people in the city that are concerned about it, which includes the vice mayor who sent an email to me, Billy Fields, and the city attorney saying, this diminishes the customer experience in Nashville. Can we fix this? My point being is this is not a Michael topic. This is about, not about Michael not liking Chris or Joyride or any of that kind of stuff. I'm here literally speaking on the fact of a dozen companies who are affected by this, two are in the room. Um, and I have a long list of council members who contacted Billy. I have a long list of companies who sent letters to me and or Billy. And I have an email from the vice mayor of the city saying this is deceptive and can confuse the customer. I'm asking you to look at the intent. Also, I'm asking you to look at the company and the fact that they're a habitual uh, ordinance violator, if you want to call it. And here's what I mean by that. Try to wrap it up. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you look at their website, our, our ordinance says you cannot sell or give beer. On their website, beer comes with their tours. That's an ordinance violation. I have pictures we told Billy about. If you look at their carts, very candidly, if you had cabs like this on the road, you'd have them off the road. And for reference sake, oops, sorry. About 36. Here's a picture of carts that are overloaded, no seat belts, full of tires. That's what's on the road today. This is an habitual ordinance offender. Yes, we're talking about domains, but look at the total company, look at the ordinance violations, and look at the intent of this ordinance is what I ask. I also have a legal expert here named Tara that would be more than glad to share with you the legal opinion of this topic um, so you have an opposing side to your, your legal opinion also. Thank you for your extension of time, and I appreciate it. In a legal practice, why did you take it to some place like the, the Consumer Protection Agency, one of those agencies that can actually rule on something like this? I've taken it to because everyone. you know we can't. Literally, we're not a court. I understand that. Okay, but if it's so, a violation of the ordinance, I think you you know. But but until somebody says it's a violation of the ordinance, it's just you saying it's a violation. Totally of good. The ordinance. I've talked to the FTC. I've okay. talked to the FTC, the governor's office, mayor's office. There's okay. not a person I haven't contacted. That's fine. And so it, your point well taken. And, and I'm not and I'm not trying to say you're doing anything wrong. It. I'm just saying it's tough for us to come to a conclusion when we're not a, in, in fact though. Um, thank you. Sense. Okay. Um, I understand your point. Very candidly, you're the lowest level to start with. You're the immediate point I have in the metro area. Thank no, I don't mean that, that wrong. I've okay, been told that before. Good. What I mean by that is we all well know going to court takes months, if not years. Yep. Um, I think this company is very candidly deceiving the public on a daily basis and waiting a year to resolve that to me is an injustice to the people that come to Nashville every day. But yes, we are exploring right. those other options as well. Um, and, and I would say back to you on that, if they have quit doing it, then that is something that will stop happening. And it, I don't think it stops you from pursuing uh, what has happened in the past, if in fact that has happened. So, Hence the reason we, re we video recorded it. And yeah. I had a lunch meeting with Chris trying to resolve this, and he laughed and said it's kind of a game. So I tried resolving it at his level also. Right. But I understand your point. I, I do. Other questions for Mr. Winter? I have one. Can you do it, and please do it in five to ten seconds? Yes. Uh, the governor's office, the other agencies that actually are fact-finding law enforcement, you got, any, you got any lead? Are they going forward with it? Like most large government agencies, they point the finger at each other, so trying to chase down the right person is challenging. The FCC, the FTC, the governor's office are all pointing me in different directions. I have a letter in here from the Consumer okay. Affairs. That's, a, that's enough. But yes, I'm, I'm getting all over the place at this point. Right. I'm chasing every lead. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Thanks, sir. Thank you for your time. Next, I believe we would have a representative from Hee Holland. Hee Holland. How are y'all? My name is Terry Evanstein. I'm the owner of Hee Holland. Um, come up here today I, I don't normally y'all don't see me up here every month to complain about tax cabs or petty cabs or whatever else is out there uh, I come in here to do my job I do my job I go home I, I try to keep to myself in my own business uh, I started my business he hauling in March of 2015 got a state license then uh, I got a state patent in June for he hauling 
and then I went as far as getting a federal patent uh, in January 2016. Um, I have had issues just like everybody else with different companies. I've tried to work it out on my own to where this type of thing isn't happening, but um, you know, I, I, I keep having reoccurring issues with being the customers being deceived by who they're going to, uh, and um, it, it is a problem. It, it really is a problem. Um, uh, not just the domain of the heholand.com that uh, Mr. Sizemore obtained and had it directed toward Joyride website, uh, but on numerous different occasions. Um, uh, I, I could go over and over and over again of the, of the times that I've had to deal with Joyride and, and the deceiving of the customers. Uh, I've had to email Mr. Fields one particular time uh, because because they, uh, they they lied to some customers of ours, and we were going to lose some serious hotels. I don't have a contract with anybody. I'm not up here to tell you that I have a million contracts with different people. I just go to a person that may be the manager, or the supervisor, or the owner of a business. I talk to them. I see if I can't get their customers for my business. I don't have some type of contract written up with anybody, but whenever. My man, whenever a manager of a place calls me and tells me that, uh, for example, the time that I emailed Mr. Fields was uh, the operations from seven to nine to four to six. Um, of course, I immediately stopped doing it because hell, I'm scared. I don't want to get a ticket. I don't want to get my permit pulled. So I tried to do the right thing. Um, so I, I emailed Mr. Fields. Um, I'm not going to take up a whole lot more of your time, but I mean, you know, what's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong, and what he's doing is wrong. I don't care how you put it. Whenever you look at Hee Hollen, you expect to go to Hee Hollen. If I was wanting pizza, why would I go to Burger King website? I wouldn't. I'd go to a Papa John's. Whenever you go to heeholland.com, there's no other reason why you would do that except to deceive an individual. And it has been done numerous times. I come up here and I don't cause y'all no trouble. I don't cause any trouble out there on the streets. I do my job and I go home. And that's what I expect everybody else to do, because that's what y'all expect out of me. Whenever I come up here to get my application, I got questioned by members of the board, and I tell you, I was scared. They, I mean, some of y'all scared me, man, because, you know, you, you were asking serious questions of how responsible. Yeah, yeah, he was one of them, you know, uh, <laughs> because, you know, you were holding the owners responsible for the actions of what they have done and what their drivers have done. and. Uh, from what I've heard from the, the, the meetings that I've been here for, nothing has changed from y'all about the owners being responsible for the actions that are, that are uh, being taken here. And, and whenever somebody purposely, not accidentally, but purposely deceives anybody, but that's my complaint. So thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do we have questions? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, Next, I think the order we said would be cruising, he hauling, joy ride, and uh, all right. So, Mr. Sizemore, we're going to try to keep two minutes. It's fine. Uh, I, I removed myself from the conversation from Jorah. Jorah owns no domains. It's Chris Sizemore. I own a domain purchasing company. I have since 2011. I own thousands. I've purchased and sold many, many, many domains, and. If we actually look, I purchased my do domain before they were in business. Um, you know, they will technically on their business license. So, you know, I have the first right of refusal on taking the name if I wanted to. It's not like a, um, I buy and sell domains. It, they only listed a couple, but I, I mean, there's a long laundry list of the ones I do own, which that's just part of my business. Um, you know, and the deceptive lying to our customers. We sent an email that we're not supposed to be running between seven and nine and four and six. They're upset at us that we did that because they're losing business. It's mandatory for our drivers not to even be on the streets at that time. They actually have to come back and they just sit at our office during those times. I don't know why they're mad at us. He, I guess he normally isn't here, so he doesn't know that, that we can't operate against those times. But they still do and we don't. Um, but me and Billy discussed that. that I don't know um, in the complaint that he said that we were lying about the four to six to seven to nine, which we're not because that's what y'all put in place. But, I mean, I guess since there's a, an investigation, I can't talk too much about anything else. Um, but 
this is the first time I'm hearing about this. No one has ever contacted me. Um, the first time that I've ever heard about anybody saying anything about a domain, Michael asked to, us to go to lunch, me and Danielle went. We talked about our drivers coming together, having a driver day, even meeting once a week, all of our drivers together so everybody could to learn. That way we don't have that confrontation. We are the bigger company out of the, the smaller company, and that's fine with me. I told them we talked about either sharing a location or sharing maintenance and things like that. The meeting went great. I, there was no talk about any of this until the very last second when we were about to walk out, and he said, so do you have a cruise website? Could I get it? And I said, sure, I'm leaving for Augusta, but we can talk when I get back. And then that's all that has ever been said to me about this entire thing until now. Um, We're going to minutes. Okay. All right. I, I appreciate it. Hang on. Okay. We might have questions for you. I, I have a question. So you, you basically just said that you do own domains that have their names, correct? It's not their names. It's all the names that I come up with before Joyride. It was Cruising Cart. It's NASCART. I own three or four hundred different names because I didn't know what to call Joyride. Joyride wasn't my first, I understand. My first name. So do you own any domains that have their name in the domain name? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Yes. Have you directed them to, to Joyride? Every website, website, no matter, oh, since 2011, have all been directed to one place. Because whenever you go bomb in bulk, they direct to one place, and it was. Well, then so. you're gonna probably have to answer to and, uh, hire. And I had no idea this was illegal because I don't own Jorat.com. I think one of them might. They could. I don't know. You, so you, we're kind of doing the same. You've thing, answered my question, and that's I really all I need to know. Other questions for Mr. Sizemore? Joyride doesn't own these domains. Mr. Sizemore does. Correct. What's the name of your company? It's a sole proprietorship, Sizemore Event Solutions. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me, if I could interject just for a minute. Hang on. Okay, thank you. Um, you want to see if anyone else wishes to speak on this? I think we're good. Yep. I'd like to make a motion that we defer this uh, to another commission that is enabled to make actions that we cannot. I have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. I have a motion on the second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion. Actually, can I make make us a um, little discussion rather than a motion that directs us to another agency or something perhaps maybe amend the motion that we leave it open to see if another agency find defer it to any other yeah and definitely defer it and de see if any agency takes any action because mm -hmm. candidly i'm not sure having owning urls that are pointed to joyrides unlawful but I don't know that area of the law, so that's just my suggestion about discussion on the motion. I'd like to amend my motion to defer um, with the option to still um, bring this back to the table if, if, right, if no actions are taken. So we have a motion that would defer indefinitely. Uh, and is there a second? I'll second that one. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion at this point? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed? Motion carries. We have deferred the uh, complaint, the review of the complaint indefinitely. Ms. Lehman from the, from the Community Foundation would like to address the commission. She wanted to do it after the hearing, but she's present if you'd like to come. Oh, I see her back Lehman. there. Okay. Ms. Lehman? I think we can allow that. Um, I, uh, I'm here to say thank you to the commission. Uh, I run the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee and Now Playing Nashville has for the last 10 years helped um, to create opportunities for everybody in this room to, to make money. Um, we bring, we have, a, a, currently, we have 120,000 unique visitors to our website um, each month. Uh, and now playing Nashville, our, our Google um, analytics show that 60% of the people who leave our site 
leave the site to uh, rent a hotel room or to book a flight. So we are um, obviously a significant driver. We also manage the, uh, the website that the CDC works uh, from, et cetera, et cetera. We are all about creating tourism and creating opportunity for the people in this room um, and uh, doing everything that we can to shore up tourism. Um, Mr. Sizemore did not uh, tell you what our conversations have been in the last 24 hours, um, which I'm somewhat surprised that you didn't. Um, but in the last 24 hours, he has agreed um, to give us the four domain names um, that he was using that redirected to Joyride and created a tremendous amount of confusion with the very people we're trying to get to come and visit our city and spend their money and then go home. Um, but uh, I think it absolutely has caused um, big challenges for us at Now Playing Nashville. It has definitely hobbled our capacity to help this community. Um, I am hopeful that he will, in fact, turn over the domain names to us, give them to us. Um, we, I, before I left the office, I had received an indication that one of them had been transferred, um, and I'm assuming that he will do as he said he will do, and to transfer the rest of them to us. My point in being here today, however, was to say thank you. I know this has taken you out of your, uh, you know, your your comfort zone, um, and has raised a lot of questions. And to the legal counsel, and to Billy, and to all of you, I, you know, I appreciate your treating this with the gravitas that um, I think it has deserved. It's not a prank. Um, it is uh, a real co-opting of, um, of our brand, and um, I appreciate the attention that you've paid to it. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, I believe you were raising your hand and we missed it earlier. <clears throat> you had a motion already? We did. So it's done. Nothing more, anything from the public would have to offer based on stuff other than hearsay. Just wanted to ask before. No, I think we're, yeah, we've moved on okay. at this point. I've, All right, well, I, thank you for your interest anyway. I'm Corey Patrick. It's always good to come and speak. I think if we've moved on past this, uh, I'd like to, I don't guess you can really add anything at this point. I do wish that you guys would consider empowering your authority. We're here today because of actions and, you know, secondary permissions and other permissions we promised we wouldn't ask for were needed. And they were based on this council. I think a lot of the questions that are asked or anything's added, I think it always comes down to how does it affect the police department. And just because the police department doesn't necessarily act, it doesn't mean that it's not an issue. I can tell you that an issue that you all just made a motion on was possibly mistreated from my standpoint. It happened, I just witnessed it. I wished I would have raised my hand a little sooner in motion because things happen in this city and they base off of who are there. And anything that happens, it, it always comes down to words. And I can tell you that I'm an individual who spends more time in this city researching alternative transportation than I ever dreamed about because we have been forced to certain obligations and new additions based on, you know, what it happened, what happens and, to the community. And just let me oh, interject sorry. here for a minute. The, the complaint was related to issues related to domain names. Oh, yes, sir. You guys so, made a motion. I wish I would have caught that because, like if, say, if you've got something else to file a complaint on, no, I don't, I don't to wish do to so. file a complaint. I would hate to file a complaint unless that were the process. I wouldn't. I would be merely okay. interested in putting my name and information on record just for these individuals who have made this motion. I actually have valuable proof, a uh, person uh, more than just hearsay that could direct this entire operation to maybe even be brought back. Because like I say, I would love to see this council empower it. I think everything we've done has caused the police department or other, you know, investigation companies and this and that. And it's just as simple as questioning who is out there because I personally know how this was all possible. 
Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but believe it or not, personal relationships that have to do with roommates and money marketing management and and uh, individual partners maybe uh, uh, Devin sir, Lee, I think. Let's go we're ahead. We're at two uh, minutes. Yes, absolutely. And, and let me, so like I say, I just... Let me just, let me just um, address your concerns here. First of all, I want to make sure you understand we are not a judicial branch. I do understand. This is something that, yes, that, that is Absolutely. that needs we are we are a country of rule of law. Absolutely. That's where this is going to go. That's absolutely right. Okay. Absolutely. So, so that's we're not here to, to say we should do more. Oh no, no, I, I never right. suggested that you Thank all do anything. Absolutely, okay. um, I appreciate it. What I did want to point out is is that I think we're past our time. Yep, we're done. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, nope, we're done. We're, we're, we're done. Uh, next, we have uh, pedal vehicles. A review of the driver application for Rachel M. Pizzatola. Ms. Pizzatola, in making your application, uh, Ms. Pizzatola failed to list a 2012 uh, charge of leaving the scene of an accident. Other than that, there's no other issues with the application. I had uh, failed to put that on there because it, I was a minor, and I believe to believe um, that it was expunged when I turned 18, so I just didn't put it on there. Really, was that from her? Because there are two applications here. Did she apply once in 2002? Well, that we, any time, if they fail, if, if they fail to disclose, I deny, and they have to re they actually have to reapply at that point. Okay. So they go back through the application process, gotcha. so you would get one that would be correct. Uh, and you know, is we're not sure why it's on the record or not on the record, but it was on the information supplied to us by the TBI. Mm -hmm. So I can't address that. But there's nothing else that would disqualify her from being a driver. And it was five years ago. Five years ago. I move to approve the application. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mm. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you so much. You're approved. Next, we have a review of a driver application uh, for Mr. Uh, Lombebo, uh, a tax cab uh, driver application. Mr. Lombebo? Um, in making his application, uh, Mr. Lombebo yes. failed to disclose a um, 2009 uh, alcohol sale to minor under 21. Those charges were dismissed, but he failed to disclose. There no, he has nothing else on his there's nothing else that would disqualify. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. All those in, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You're approved. Okay, thank you so much. Next, we have other passenger vehicles for hire. Uh, should, do we do these individually or together, Mr. Fields? If you read them into the record, I think we I can read them into the record and you can do them as one if you like. Please do so. We have application for A Star, Bella Limo Services, Exclusive Transportation LLC, and Sublime Transportation. Any issues with the applications? There are no issues with the application. Make a motion to approve the company's application on Bonk. All one, two, three, four of them. We second. have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We have four new companies. Uh, we also have uh, name have changes. <laughs> Most of them are, um, the first one, AJ Limo, has an address change. Uh -huh. Executive yeah, Transportation of Nashville has an address right change. Right. 808 Transportation has an, ex has an address change, as well as adding a partner. Uh, and then, uh, Street Tread Limo uh, would like to add a partner. The, the ordinance, anytime the face of the application is altered or needs to be altered, it has to be uh, presented to the commission for its acceptance. But there are no issues with any There are of no these. issues that we're aware of. All right, no issues. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next, we have driver applications. Again, for other passenger vehicles for hire. Any issues? Uh, for the driver applications, mm -hmm. they, they have. There are each one of them each has one has an issue. All issues. right. So, first one is Jamie Derrick. Mr. Derrick, 
In making his application, Mr. Derrick failed to list a 1991 reckless endangerment charge, a 2001 attempted burglary charge, and a 2003 probation violation. Uh, his uh, <coughs> background, uh, I, I shared his background with you. I'm finding that here. This was in addition to the ones that were listed. Correct. You all have questions for Mr. Derrick while I find this on my agenda? Mr. Derrick, the probation violation in 2003, did that relate to one of the offenses that you actually listed? Yes. Which one? Oh, the one in 99. The one in 99. Or 2000. Okay. Would that have been the theft of property, the property that ended in 2000? Yep. <laughs> How long was your probation? Six years. What happened on the probation violation? Um, I just had to pay my restitution. Okay. For, what, for whatever it's worth, I don't particularly find failure to list a probation violation as failure to list another criminal offense because it, the predicate offense was the theft of property. The probation violation was simply another proceeding coming <coughs> off of that. So. Not an additional crime. Not an additional, or additional crime. arrest or... Particularly in a situation where it's, they're trying to get you motivated to pay your restitution. Right. But that doesn't excuse the other two, though they're very, very old. Why, why, why didn't you list the reckless endangerment or the attempted burglary? When, um, when I went to go get my record, um, that wasn't on there. And I just failed to put it on there because I didn't... Things like that, I just put in the past, trying to move on. I never thought about it when I was doing the audition. Well, you remembered your suspended license from 94, but you can't remember a more yeah, serious charge actually, of attempted burglary in actually, 2001? I didn't, I didn't put the, not, um, the suspended license on there. I'm looking at one July yeah. 20th, 1994 suspended license. Yes, sir, but um, I didn't actually put it on there. As um, I don't know why it didn't come up as something I didn't put on there. I didn't put it on there because I did not remember it. It kind of looks like your handwriting on there. Yeah, I mean, they, these are all listed in your well, handwriting. Well, I'm sorry. When I got my record from the... TBI? Yeah, yeah, that was on there. I just listed everything that they gave me that was on my record. So you went to the effort of getting your criminal record from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, and, my, and you wrote down what was on that record? Yes, sir. I wrote everything that was on there, on my criminal record and my driver's record. All right, so what was the outcome of the attempted burglary charge? It was dismissed. It was, uh, it was more of um, me and my ex-wife arguing. This April 10th, 2015 that you wrote down here on number eight, eight is, is that wreck someone hit me? Yeah, somebody ran into me. Okay. okay. I'm just trying to read it. I may be a little premature on this, but I'd make a motion to go ahead and prove it. A we have a motion a and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Derrick, you're approved. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we have uh, Timothy A. Schultz. Mr. Schultz, what's the issue here, Mr. Fields? Uh, in making his application, he failed to list a 12-21-2016 charge of driving on a suspended license. 12-21-16, 15 months ago. This is for a low speed? This is for a low speed, yeah. Vehicle application. What had happened is I'd got back into town as long as I had a rough year out on the road and uh, my car blew up and I couldn't get back home. My license went expired and, uh, and <laughs> I couldn't even get on a Greyhound bus to get back to Nashville. But I got, got my license reinstated as the court, but I can't go back to get that totally removed from my record until April the 4th or May the 4th, 5-4. 
You currently have a license? Yes. Yeah. Okay. With the F endorsement and everything on it. Why was your license suspended? Well, I got a ticket down in Texas, and then when I was out on tour, and then my car blew up, and then I was stranded in Texas, and then my birthday came to pass, and my license expired. So then I couldn't even get on like a set of Greyhound bus to get home to Nashville. I was stuck for a while until I could get home this fall. And then I found a job, you know, working landscape uh, to make the money to get my license back. So it was just a, it was an ordeal. It was a, it was a nightmare not even being able to, to get home and being stuck, but. And I can't say you do have to have a valid ID to ride a Greyhound bus. Yeah, you do yeah, now, and it's, it's, it's. Uh, <laughs> That's right. We're certainly not going to go there with you, Mr. Tarver. No, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a, I couldn't get on an airplane, nothing. There was nothing I could do to get home. Uh, any further questions for Mr. Schultz? It's part two. I know. I make a motion to approve. We have a motion for approval. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Schultz, you are approved. Thank you. I got one question. It's yeah. the 30th today. If I go get my license on the 31st tomorrow, will I have to turn around and go get it next week? What? Or should I get it on Monday? Get it on Monday. That's the question I have. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Next is uh, Harold Shaw. Mr. Shaw, <coughs> Mr. Fields, what's the background in, here? In making his application, he listed a lot. Yeah. And mm -hmm. heavy anytime mm -hmm. you've directed me, anytime that we had a uh, record that was of this nature, I should bring it to the commission for your review. All right. Is the company you would be working with here? Nashville. You are? Okay. That's Nashville Chauffeur? Now, they're, that's, they're very specific, and we've, we've had conversations trying to figure this one out. Mr. Shaw was placed on parole. Yes. While he was on parole, he came off of parole, or anyway, he was on parole, then there were additional charges and his parole was reinstated. There's specific information in the ordinance about when a driver is disqualified based on parole. I'm not sure that I had the experience to go through and make sure I understood exactly the legal ramifications, but I also knew we had expertise on the commission that had expertise and plus we also spoke to legal briefly about it. Uh, this is another passenger vehicle for hire. So there's some questions about whether he's a qualified applicant based upon when he went on parole Correct. and whether he's off parole. In other words, if you're off parole for a period of seven years, yeah. you would be eligible. If you remain on parole, um, you would be ineligible within that seven year period. So if by being reinstated in the probate and the parole, he becomes. Does that reflect straight back to the other charge, which would make him, from my perspective, ineligible? So the parole was revoked in 2013. Um, first of all, how y'all doing? Um, uh, it was revoked. Um, I think in 2011, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Okay. Yes, 2011, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I was reinstated, although I uh, beat the charges, all charges was dismissed, but I was reinstated back on the same parole. Um, my time never changed. Uh, uh, I was reinstated back on the same parole, yes, uh, that, that I was on at first. Um, in other words, uh, I got paroled 
back to my original parole. So no conditions were changed on your parole? Nothing was changed. Everything was the same. And this the charges was, were dismissed? Yes, the charge was dismissed. And I got reinstated back on the same parole that I was on. Nothing changed uh, uh, as far as my parole status. And that's the way parole works. Uh, 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 you just like uh, if you get arrested, even though they charge you, you beat the charges by you getting arrested, uh, taken into custody on the charges that they was charging you with. Uh, even though the charges is dismissed, you still get violated for being arrested. See what I'm saying? That's right. That's yeah. the way parole works, and I was kicked back out on the same parole. When did your parole start? My parole started in uh, 2005. Well, let me ask a simple question. Yes, Are you sir. on parole today? Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> well, then, if our rule says you have to be off parole for seven years before you're an eligible candidate or applicant, yeah. it would seem to me you're, no offense, but if you're on parole today, I don't think you're an, an eligible applicant for the, uh, to drive legal to try to tear on that was the conclusion that we reached well, yeah. again this was one of the more complicated combinations in fact the first one I'd seen with the exact so I wanted to make sure the Commission was familiar and aware and have an opportunity to talk about it but it was this lad you know we we're at the same conclusion that if he was on parole we we couldn't by rule even really consider it but I did not want to deny him a public hearing because I didn't want to deny him public hearing if I was wrong. Is it commission rule or is it part of the ordinance? The law ordinance. The ordinance says has been convicted, pled guilty, placed on probation or parole, or been released within a period of seven years prior to the date of the application. So that that's contemplating that even if you were released less than seven years, you still would be ineligible. That makes sense. And he's still on parole. Wait, it yeah. says placed on probation or parole. Right, and so the question is within seven years, not that he's off parole within seven years, or completed parole after seven years. Placed on parole, right? But he was recently placed on parole. See that back in two thousand five. Well, that was the confusion because we. Yeah. It was my impression based on this, he was off parole, which would have made him eligible. When his parole was reinstated, he was placed back on parole. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's where I wanted. Oh, wait, you you yes, sir. you are today on parole, correct? Yes. You I'm report on... to a parole officer. Yes, sir. All right. Um, in 2005, you got paroled. Yes, sir. And then sometime 2011, 2012, you got violated on your parole. You went back in custody. Right. And then they reinstated you back on your parole that was given to you in 2005. That was originally given back to me in 2005. Okay. Correct. No, so, no new parole started. No, they, yeah. It's just a violation. The same parole exists in 2005. And the charges were dismissed on the violation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He does say dismissed. Yeah, so he's, his, he was placed on parole in 2005. My original parole, yeah, yes, sir. I, and he was, I would almost call it temporarily placed back in custody for parole violation. What did they do with the parole violation? They sustain it or or or, uh, or dismiss it? Uh, yeah, you had to have a parole hearing. So did they sustain yeah, it or no, dismiss I, it? I got revoked on parole. You did get revoked. Yes, I got revoked. But when, uh, according to the parole board, and I talked to them about this when Billy had sent me to mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. and I explained it to them what I was trying to do to get hired to be a chauffeur, mm -hmm. and they told me that my parole still stood from what I was originally on. Yeah. Uh, that's just a procedure that if anyone gets out on parole and they violate, doesn't start parole all over again. It's no, you're, 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 you're actually serving your sentence while you're on parole in the community. Exactly. And I'll, I'll give you a quick example. If a person gets 10 years, and what was your sentence? Uh, I had a 32-year sentence. 32 years. Yes. And he serves 16 of that, and then they parole him for 16 years. He's... He's out on parole, and let's say after eight years while on parole, he violates. He doesn't go back in to do 16 years. He goes back in, he'll do eight years unless they reinstate his parole, 
and he doesn't start over with 16 more years of parole, he starts over, let's say he serves another year, then he'll have seven years left of the sentence, because you are paroled into the community to serve your sentence. You are correct, yes, sir. Well, yeah, I'm <laughs> and we're not going to go there. Why I know this? <laughs> um, yes, sir, you are correct. Um, <laughs> I went in for uh, 18 months, and I, they kicked me right back out. Yeah. I'm on the same parole that I was originally on. Yeah, and you are. Uh, you, they they don't start a new parole or anything. No. So my, my question then, because I may have been jumping the gun when I asked, are you on parole today? Therefore, you're not a, a qualified applicant. How do you guys read that ordinance? Does it? Does it say put on parole seven years ago, or does it say off parole? It does not say off. I don't think it does either, yeah. Oh, okay. Stephanie Floyd, I can read it aloud if you like. Yeah, please. Uh, this is section F of uh, 674.120. It says, any applicant shall, in addition to any disqualification listed elsewhere in this chapter, be disqualified if the applicant, one, has been convicted, pleaded guilty, no low contendere, placed on judicial diversion pursuant to Tennessee Code annotated section 40, 35, 313, or been released from incarceration, probation, or parole within a period of seven years prior to the date of application for the violation of any of the following offenses under the laws of Tennessee, any state, any other state, or the United States of America, and then it lists those that okay. would disqualify. Mr. Fields, so it says released from Correct. probation or parole. They're all, it's, has been released from incarceration, comma, probation or parole. Mr. Shaw, I, I, Metro Legal, I'll, I'll defer to your opinion, but I think when it says released from, it sounds to me like you've got to be off parole That's for fair. for That's seven years. Seven years at least. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm not I'm disappointed on that because you could a person could have parole for what do you what do you have parole for about 20, 15 years, 16 years when you first got out in 2005. Uh, actually, 2005 for 19 years. 19 years? Yes. Mm -hmm. I come off in another six, six and a half years. And then he has to wait another seven years to be a qualified applicant. But, uh, flying cars. Uh, hmm? Be flying from, cars. Yeah. From my understanding, uh, sir, um, is that prior to um, getting off of, I mean, once I was placed on parole in 2005, as long as I, um, um, a violation doesn't count, but long as I, uh, from, they're talking, from my understanding, they're talking about like, if you, if I just got, got out in 2005, and uh, let's just say I got uh, convicted in 2005, and I go do a year, from, from that year, that I get out, I get out in 2006. If I got out in 2006, if I haven't been in trouble in seven years, when? and that's not based on parole, that's just being a person, just being co uh, convicted and come out and hadn't been in trouble in a seven year span. I, I think we, we get that part, but I think what we're hearing from our, on our legal side is that the actual Metro ordinance says that if you've been on parole within the last seven years, that by default you are not eligible. And that's... Yes. It's the words released from right. that is the catch. Right. Not uh, from when you were first given uh, the conviction in 2005 and placed on parole, not seven years from that, but from the point of the ordinance says released from and you haven't been released from probation so by by metro code we can't do anything oh uh, i okay. didn't know that other jobs i mean i'm i'm saying what you all saying metro yeah. code however but well as far as the driver the metro driver's code i yes. think we can't do yeah. anything okay. you could do maybe another job in metro but not yeah yeah uh, unfortunately <coughs> and that's a metropolitan code that's not a worldwide code that's right. a, a metropolitan code. And is a metropolitan code specific to other passenger vehicles, other passenger vehicles for hire? Okay. 
And Mr. Shaw, it's no reflection on you. It's, it's we, we, it was a rule that was passed by the Metro. So and basically y'all just saying after what, six years from now and then I don't be in trouble for seven years after that? For, it seems like for a, this a, particular. Yeah. Unless there's something like in a terribly the way long to time. the law. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a long time right there. Not. And, and that's what you all in interpreting from that? Yes, yes. Uh, because other jobs I have applied for, uh, that's what they do. They just go from the time that you got now, seven years. Yeah, mm -hmm. everybody has different regulations. Our regulations were given to us by the Metro Council, and that's the governing body that we go by. Because okay. I, I did uh, speak to Carl Dean about it. Uh, he represented me in trial during the time he was an attorney, and he told me the opposite of whatever, so I was just, thought maybe I would bring that up. Yeah. He was just saying that due to the, from the point that you get out, um, uh, five, uh, some places, uh, uh, he was just saying five to seven years or whatever from the time that you get out, no matter if you're on parole, parole or probation. Yeah. yeah, our hands are tied, unfortunately. Uh, I do mean could, I, uh, could I pose a question mm -hmm. to legal? Yes. Um, is there a possibility that he could appeal that for a different interpretation before sure. another body? It, it, um, the vice chair read the um, appeal um, mechanism at the beginning of the meeting. So, um, I, I mean, I, I do think that the council ordinance is fairly clearly worded. Um, so it's not... In, in my opinion, this commission would not have the ability to deviate from what council has said. Right. Um, but I mean, any anyone who appears before this commission and is disappointed in the commission's ruling has the ability to appeal by writ of certiorari as described by the. You're welcome to read that again if that's. Yeah, I mean it's, um, and I'll I'll just give you my copy of it. Yes, you do have the right to appeal our decisions mm -hmm. yes. uh, to a to court. I mean, our decision is based on the code, mm -hmm. yes. um, which, you know, I would like cruel and, and, and part of what yeah. you read yeah. suggests that the person consult with an attorney to make exactly. sure that the um, the procedural requirements and timelines are met, but you know, also to make sure that you're not wasting your time and bringing the appeal. I would say. That's right. Yeah. So, so you would have 60 days to appeal, and I will give you this sheet. So I think. Um, well, uh, we, we have to have a motion on this. You know, reluctantly, I'll make a motion to deny your application, Mr. Mr. Shaw's application. I have a motion. And I hate to second it, but I'll second it. And we have a um, reluctant second. Uh, so we have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I would like to make another motion, though, and that we would put that particular ordinance on maybe for next month or, or some month's agenda where we might review that and make a recommendation to the Metro Council regarding um, released from parole for seven years. It does seem punitive. Um, can I ask a question about it? It'd be possible without a motion for you to ask staff and legal to review and make recommendations or, or bring back what we found to the commission? Well, are they allowed to talk to me too while we're making the Metro legal? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I, I, would, I would like to have some discussions about that and, okay. and then make some recommendations to this commission mm -hmm. and put it up for discussion with everybody. We're going to look into it, but yes, thank right you now all. that's where we are. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, okay. thank you for being here, Mr. Shaw. Yes, sir. And if you could stick around, I've got a question for you later sure. after the meeting, if that's appropriate. <laughs> so I have a motion that we're going to ask. Uh, no, no, no. I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. We got a, There's we a, got a motion and never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wrecker and Towing Services, we have a reviewing a driver application for uh, Justin Hart. Mr. Mr. Hart is present. Mr. Hart uh, applied. Uh, he also has an extensive record. Uh, he originally was going to work for Advanced Towing, and Advanced Towing has withdrawn their uh, their off job offer to him. And at present time, he does not have a company to work for. 
that I'm aware of since earlier this morning. Well, it's been a catch-22 situation all week. Uh, everybody, in order to train me, I just found out I have to have a permit to even be trained, uh, which I was training under my nose to my knowledge, so that was one of the reasons why I kind of uh, decided to do this on my own, because I have to have a permit to train, and I've got at least three out of 20 record companies that said, hey, you show up with that permit, you got a job. Um, yeah, been keeping three-year MVR clean, uh, been, been really wanting this, and been really trying hard uh, to get a job, but it's, I have to have a permit to get a job, to, to even train, to even ride in the truck, and no one's really gonna be able to give me that opportunity without that. Uh, what I would respectfully ask y'all to do uh, is possibly give me a 30-day permit. That would give me time to train and find someone that's willing to give me a job. If, if not, if, if you wouldn't give me one for a duration of normal, a year. But I'm just looking for an opportunity and chance to, you know, I've got my life together and I just need a job to do that. Well, I don't think you have the authority to issue a temporary permit. I think you could take action and award him a permit, but it would not be issued until a company authorized that he was gonna be hired by. And then order me to restrict him to whichever company hired him. And it would be pretty irregular, but unless legal tells me we can't do it, it would what it would be is you would you would grant his permit, but it would not contingent on being hired by a licensed company, and the, he would then be restricted to the licensed company until hearing back to the commission. Okay. But that was the issue. He, it, it's we don't want to issue a permit unless you've got a place to work. Right, and I, and I can't get a place. I can't no, get I a job without the permit. I understand, but just just so you understand. Uh, it's been a common practice of this commission since I've been on it for almost six years that we don't issue permits unless there's a company willing to take that person on. So we're kind of in a, a I'm mode the here. Way. I understand. I understand. So I'm not saying we're going to do it, but I'm, I'm asking for how we might be able to do it if we want to move forward. Are you on probation right now? No, sir. Okay. There could be a motion entertained to allow to issue the permit with the understanding that he must obtain a company within a specific period of time or he would be pulled back by. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that totally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> would that be automatic? <laughs> would that have to be brought so back up the permit for review? But you would have to give the permit or he couldn't get the job, but you, it would be contingent upon the, the company engaging him. Give me 30 days and you can take it from me. I mean, it's, I don't know how y'all, what the record is, but. Obtaining a con company well, that you know, we can put it, we put an ending date on it, it's an ending date, so. Or a company that backs him within 20 days or. Whatever. You know, whatever you're, if he has job ties that he says he does. You know. Cotton Stone says, I show up with the permit, they'll hire me right now. We've never had this problem before, though, have we? <laughs> no. So why are we suddenly having one and bending over backwards? It, it's not unusual for companies to make the comment, if you can get a permit, will give you a job. Mm -hmm. It usually doesn't get to this point. They either give him the job or it doesn't get to the commission. It just or it doesn't it just doesn't happen. Or they so. don't they don't pursue it. Correct. Okay. Or well, they look and they can't find somebody to hire them. And I, I, shows up. I originally called and asked him to postpone it a month, but once I found out I couldn't even train without the permit, I said, you know what, I'm gonna leave it up to my Lord and Savior to give me you know, I'm gonna give him the faith and that's what I came here for and represent so, myself. The only kind of training he'd, he would not be legally, uh, uh, even though you'd be a worker, you cannot be on the record unless you have a license. Uh, he could train in the yard, you could train you could train at the record yard and that sort of thing, but you couldn't physically be on the public streets without a permit, right. so he, he's they accurate. Need, they need me in the truck, yeah. Right. Well, I'm looking over your record. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. Well, yeah, but they only, I guess they ended April 24th, 2015 with a probation violation. That was the last time I was ever in trouble. Are there any drug screens required? I got my DOT physical and it required a drug screen last week, sir. When was that, last week? Last week. Because mm -hmm. there's a, a, a laundry list of possession, is it marijuana, cocaine, what? 
a little bit of everything. Okay. Uh, uh, I would say that if you did look at the record, I've never went three years without a speeding ticket. I mean, I used to drive, live my life on the edge. I've never went three years without some kind of charge. I yeah, haven't I had a charge that. in three years. Uh, I haven't had a ticket, anything in three years. I gave my life to God two years ago. So I'm, I'm a new Christian, and it's hard, but I'm succeeding. I agree with you. From 91 through 2015, you only went maybe every other month without something. And it's the first time in my life, and I know I got a bad record, but my record will reflect now my new life. And we're only two years since April well, that was 2015. Front, since my uh, last conviction, that was in 2014. Tara, we could give a uh, conditional permit. Yeah, I believe because we conditioned it before previously on um, Right. I, I've, I've been here when we put conditions before, if I recall, so I mm -hmm. think this is something I'd that make a motion to give a conditional permit with the uh, review, with, with an end date on that permit of 30 days. We have a motion uh, for a conditional permit uh, for 30 days. Is there a second? And just to clarify, the, the condition we, we, we need is to, to find employment it. within 30 days. Finding right. employment, that's, yeah. <clears throat> I will I make a motion to give a conditional permit uh, with an end date of 30 days with a provision of employment. We have a motion for 30 days. Okay, motion in a second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank That's you very 30 much. Days. Oh, what do you I take care of him? Do I talk to him? Yep. Is there any other business? No, sir. I have no other business for any of the commission. Thank you all. Motion to adjourn. There we go. Doesn't even second. require a second. We'll take one. <laughs> Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.